You did well. Very well, Kenton. I should have specialized. I should have stuck to the British Empire. But a wide spectrum's always appealed to me. Yes, you did well. A good term. You deserve to enjoy these holidays. Well done. He could never understand why his father reveled in sticking postage stamps into albums. What does he do with them then? Just endless rows of little bits of coloured paper to stare at. Well, 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 I didn't know I had the ten cent blue. Stamps from places no one's ever been to. Tanganyika. Andorra. Who are the two R's in Andorra? It doesn't matter. Except the people who live there. Or print the stamps. Gabon. Gambia. The Gold Coast. Latvia, Liechtenstein, Lithuania. Your mother would have been proud of you, Captain. I don't give away top scholarships, not to Winchester. Madagascar. Ah, 10 cent black on blue, 1891. Mint. Yes, he'd attained his father's ambition. It pleased his soul to have made an old man happy. You're writing again, are you? Scribble, scribble, eh? Five Barney, Green, 1890. Splendid. A son of mine going to Winchester. Inspiration had fled. He threw down his pen his pencil. The great novel based on personal experience, the summer of 1928, The Study. That's no beginning. And what experience? Eight weeks, eight long weeks, the holidays yawned ahead. Eight weeks before he was destined to walk through the gates of his public school. Eight weeks, isn't it? The holidays, I mean. Well, plenty of fresh air is what you need. Good fresh sea air to build you up for Winchester. Pity about Carmichael's mumps. Damn shame about Carmichael's mumps. He'd have been company for you. I'll take you out on the golf course one day next week. I once thought of specialising in Sarawak. I'm glad I didn't. He dreaded every long, boring day and evening stretching away into nothingness. Something must happen. He must make something happen. But what? He trembled with expectation. No, he tingled with expectation. Tired, old boy? Don't blame you. Been a long day. Same number of hours as any other day. Not used to the sea air. Not yet, eh? You've been very quiet all evening. Scribble, scribble, eh? Well done. I'd like to give you something to spend in the holidays. Let's call it a little extra. A reward. Oh, by the way, I've got to go up to town tomorrow for a couple of days. I'll catch the 8.35. Mrs. Price will be here, of course. He'll keep an eye on you. I'll be back in time for lunch on Tuesday. Why don't you go down to the beach tomorrow? Have a swim. If only Carmichael didn't have mumps. If only you had a hobby. Every man should have a hobby. Reading's all right. And all that scribbling you do. But they're not hobbies. Not by my book. It's 10 o'clock. Time to climb the stairs to Bedfordshire. You'll be all right, won't you? Tomorrow, I mean. You'll be able to amuse yourself. 
Treat yourself to an ice cream at Fuller's. He sat in Fuller's tea room, drowning in ennui and melancholy. This, he hoped, would soon be alleviated by a tuppenny vanilla ice. Were you the large vanilla? What? Oh, yes, thanks. And I've given you two wafers. Aren't you the lucky one? It was a thoughtful gesture. He smiled his thanks. <laughs> How could she know he never ate wafers? Every day he comes in here. Ever so nice he is. Who is he? I told you, Beryl. He's in the show on the pier. An actor? No, a singer. I've seen the show three times now. <laughs> he sings Irish ballads. The Rosa Tralee. Danny boy. What's his name? Dennis. Dennis O'Donovan. Beryl? Hmm? Don't think he comes in here regular because... Well, because... He comes in here regular because he wants his pot of tea and his poached egg, love. Well, he always sits at table four. Always one of my tables. He had a piercing headache. His eyes streamed with tears. He'd eaten the ice cream too quickly. Don't get mixed up with theatricals, love. My first was a sailor. That was bad enough. He always had three girls at a time after him. One on, one off, and one in the wash, he used to say. <laughs> I dreamt about him again last night. Dennis? Yes. He was singing to me. You have got it bad. I couldn't make out the words, but he seemed to sort of float off the stage and come right up to me. He called me his goddess. You? A goddess? <laughs> God, you better start clearing. We close in five minutes. Goddess? She doesn't look like a goddess, he thought. But what do goddesses look like? Goddess. Goddess. Excuse me, love. Mind if I clear? No, I finished. She smelled like flowers. Not like his father's greenhouse, but like the fresh flowers in the vicar's garden. We close in a few minutes, sweetheart. Here's your bill. Thank you. Refreshed by those victuals, he knew he had to wind his way homewards. He had to make something happen. He knew one couldn't write an autobiographical novel unless something happened. OK, sweetheart. Sweetheart. Carmichael has a sweetheart. The girl with red pigtails. She kissed him last Christmas under the mistletoe. Uh, so he said. He said this holiday he's going to kiss her again, without the mistletoe. But he can't. Not with mumps. Ice is in fullers, eh? Mind you, if you'd come up to London with me, you'd have hated it. Spend most of the time jumping from cab to cab. When we could find one. Exquisite, isn't it? Cypripedium. Ladies' slipper. Orchids must be the most perfect of flowers. 
They're certainly the perfect hobby. Stamps, golf and orchids. If ever you want to win a woman's heart, and one day you will, present her with an orchid. Mark my words. Oh, you can buy her chocolates, or send her roses, or even write poetry to her. But nothing can compare with an orchid. He was aware of a sense of shock. How could a man as old as his father know anything about winning a woman's heart? Mark my words. And yet? And yet? Plenty of warmth and no drafts. That's what orchids like. Well, oh, that's that then for today. I'm off for a round of golf. See you at dinner. Mrs. Price is making us a summer pudding. And then I shan't be late, that's for sure. Uh, don't forget to close the door behind you. No drafts. He made up his mind. He had to do it. His sparkling eyes searched for the choicest bloom. He flung wide the door of Fuller's tea shop. He walked boldly up to her and said, May I, even at the risk of being considered forward, present you with this token of my love and esteem? She inclined her head, blushed, and smiled lovingly at him. Orchid, the most perfect of flowers. Cypripedium, lady's slipper. Well, listen, are you sure you can manage it? Because I know you're a bit fragile. Come on. All right, listen, you should have my feet. I will soon be finished. All right, just hold that for a Your Danny boy. Dennis! In the show, he sings this song. Sending flowers to my love. You'll believe anything you want to believe. <laughs> he had a sweetheart. His leaping heart was filled with an unaccustomed joy. Carmichael once carved his sweetheart's name on an apple tree. It damaged the tree, his parents said. They were furious. Rushing homeward, he thought of her. He couldn't carve her name anywhere. He didn't know what it was. Diana. Diana was a goddess. Yes, Diana. My goddess Diana, he cried to the sky, to the wind, to the sea. Wonderful, Mrs. Price. I thought my dear wife used to make the best summer puddings. But I have to say that your one this evening was equally splendid. Thank you very much, Colonel. Shall I clear? Well, thank you. Mind if I clear? You shouldn't be a waitress. No? You're a goddess. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sleep well, Kenton. Good night, Mrs. Price. Good night, Colonel. Good night, Mrs. Price. You know Dunn? The poet, John Dunn? Supreme understanding of the human condition. That 
was twice in one day that his father had managed to shock him. His father, reading and understanding poetry. Listen to this. Send me some token that my hope may live, or that my easeless thoughts may sleep and rest. Send me some honey to make sweet my hive, that in my passion I may hope the best. Yes, well, it's ten o'clock. Time to lock up. This would be the way to make her his. He would send her the poem. He would also suggest an assignation on the cliff top above the pounding sir. On the third bench, past the pillar box, the day after tomorrow, at 6.30. Yes, ten o'clock. Up the stairs to Bedfordshire. Up the stairs to Bedfordshire. What shall we do tomorrow? There we are, Kenton. Where are you going? This'll do. Take that one, lad. Bear will look after you. Love. She'd never said it that way before. His father had been telling the truth. An orchid was the way to win her heart. So, you don't want to come up with me to London tomorrow. Very well. I hope these holidays are not proving too dull for you, Kenton. No, not at all. How could his father know how truly exciting the holidays now were? I'm not much of a companion for you, I fear. So, ice cream for you and china tea for me. China. Always china. Much more refreshing. One ice and one pot of china. Yes, sir. Now that he had found the goddess Diana, she was a constant companion in his thoughts. He had to give her the poem. We should have tried to get one of your prep school friends to come here for the holidays. That would have spoiled everything. China tea doesn't come from China, did you know? Any more than Indian ink comes from India. Or Welsh rabbit from Wales. Thank goodness for mumps. If he'd gone to Scotland with Carmichael, this wouldn't have happened. He'd never have crossed the goddess's path. I mean... Well, they're the sort of flowers that millionaires send to their lady friends. What? Don't they? C.B. Cochrane's doing a new musical in the West End. <laughs> it was ever such a surprise, finding it on the table, just lying there in that bit of newspaper. Cochrane's a personal friend of mine, you know. Oh, yes. I'm going to write to him. Personal letter. I'm good. I've got quality. You'll have to see me. I don't intend to spend next summer in a dump like this, I can tell you. Oh, this place ain't so bad. Not when you find presents left lying. C.B. Cochrane, he's the tops. If I get into one of his shows, my name will be up there in electric lights. What did you say, presents? He watched her standing there, forcing herself to be pleasant to the customers. I mean, when someone leaves you something like that, well, it means something. I mean, it does, doesn't it? I'll have the bill, please. I'm free on Saturday after work. What? Nothing. Free Saturday? Oh, yes, after work. Well, why don't you come and see the show? Oh, yes. Yes, I'd love to. Good. Oh. He unfolded the crisp white parchment on which he'd inscribed in his best copper plate John Dunn's verse. She smiled longingly at him as she passed. He caught the scent of the vicar's garden. Or could it be the orchid? Nestling warmly against the heart, perhaps. Rugby boots. We must go after town to get you kitted out for next term. They sent a list. We rushed off our feet today. Thank you. Thank you. China tea actually comes from India. The Nilgiri Hills. I still miss India. 
Would their eyes meet across the crowded Fuller's tea room? Don't eat it too quickly. I have something for you, my dear, he said. John Dunn. Her eyes lit up. My favorite poet. A supreme understanding of the human condition. Dear, no sugar. Why did his father have to come to Fuller's too? The poem had to be delivered somehow. Where is that girl? Waitress. Sit down, Kenton. The girl would have got it for us. The deed was done. The die was cast. John Dunn delivered. The meeting suggested, on the cliff top, third bench past the pillar box, tomorrow. You're not serious. How do you know it was from Dennis? And how do you know it was for you? I tell you, I just know. He was to meet her on the cliff top above the turbulent waves. Canton, you sent the orchid. You're very obviously a millionaire. He smiled enigmatically. You sent the poem and arranged this meeting. She clapped her hands with joy, tinged with admiration. Diana, he said, you never told me your name, but I guessed. I understand these things. I'm a writer, a man of letters. I didn't carve your name on the tree, O oh Goddess Diana, but I'll carve it for the world to see on this bench. He vowed to her, I'll carve your name and it will be there for all eternity. I've got a new scalp knife. She was half an hour late. have waited forever, but Mrs. Price served dinner at 7.45. His father hated unpunctuality at meals, and Mrs. Price fussed about such mundane matters too. Besides, Rain was on the way, a violent thunderstorm of tropical proportions. Where were you then? Where was I when? Yesterday afternoon. In the theatre, of course. We had our matinee. Poached egg on toast and a pot of tea as per. But you and make said it a decent that... pot. You forgot to put the tea in last time. You said up on the cliff. What cliff? What are you talking about? You left a note on the table yesterday. A ten bob note? Oh, don't try to be funny. You know what I'm talking about. Of course. She hadn't seen him sitting there, waiting. Why didn't you keep the rendezvous, he asked the goddess. Flower? Poetry? Have you been out in the sun too much? 
You asked me to come and see your show. Yes, I did. Tomorrow. You'll enjoy it. She couldn't meet him on the clifftop. She couldn't get away. This man comes into the tea shop and talks and talks. He's a sailor or a banker or something. He argues and complains about the tea. I beg you, Kenton. Take me away from this terrible tea shop. Take me to your millionaire home. And we'll read poetry together in your father's study. I'll kiss you like Carmichael's friend with the red pigtails. When we've finished with the poetry, we'll go into your father's conservatory amongst the orchids. I've had enough. They take advantage. They're always right. Theatricals. And he's a theatrical lead. Me on he was. He tried to understand what she was talking about. She seemed distressed. Usual for you, then. Tap me vanilla. He wanted to tell her. Tell her that he would like to hold her hand. He didn't want a tuppenny vanilla. Tuppenny vanilla, please. I mean, it's not as if he were even a real theatrical. I mean, he's a singer. Stop. Diana, stop. Just be silent. Listen to me. He sent an orchid and a soppy poem. Didn't even rhyme. Honestly, they ask you to meet him and then nothing. He had to tell her. He had to admit. He was the man who wooed her. He was the man who would win her heart. You? You did? You sent that orchid and that poetry stuff? Oh, I don't believe you. Yes, I do. She was about to hold him close. Little wretch! Bloody cheek! She must be shouting at someone else. Trying your tricks, eh? Making a fool out of people? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Who do you think you are? Is there anything wrong, love? No. Yes. No. Well, make up your mind. I'll take this order if you want to speak with your Dennis. I don't. And it's all this snotty kid's fault. Oh. Well, what do you want, love? He wanted to explain. He wanted to tell her there'd been a misunderstanding. Above all, he wanted to escape from Fuller's tea room. Never to return. Never. Ever. I haven't got all day, Your Majesty. She wasn't a goddess. She was what Carmichael called a bit V, C and C. What do you want? Vulgar, cheap and common. Nothing, thank you. Goodbye. End of the chapter. Long, boring days with his father lay ahead. The sooner the holidays ended and he went to Winchester, the better. Is that you, Kenton? Yes, father. Who else could it be? What's it to be, Kenton? Stamps. What does he know of life? Of love? China tea doesn't come from China. Indian ink doesn't come from India. Goddesses don't come from tea shops. Ah, Kenton, good news. Two pieces of good news, in fact. A letter from Carmichael's parents. It wasn't mumps. You can go up to Scotland after all. When? Tomorrow, if you like. Mrs. Price will help you pack. The other piece of news is this. I'd like you to come into the study for a moment. I... I want you to meet Diana. A friend of mine. A very good friend indeed. I wanted to talk to you about this, but Diana arrived a few minutes ago, and as you're now about to go up to Scotland after all... Well, never mind. Come in. The goddess! Diana, in this house, a friend, a very good friend of his father. Kenton, where are you? He was embarrassed at the thought of Diana, the waitress, the ex-goddess, being in his house. Kenton, what's the matter? 
You're miles away. His father couldn't understand the sense of disillusionment. Diana, may I introduce Kenton? How'd you do? I've heard so much about you, Kenton. I hear you go to Winchester next term. Congratulations. Thank you. He's a bright boy. Sherry, darling. Thank you, yes. How could his father, at his advanced age, know about love? It has nothing to do with orchids and poetry. And why not a taste of sherry for Kenton? After all, it's a special occasion. Yes. Life goes on. This had merely been an incident. He was going to Scotland to see Carmichael. Thank you. The one for Kenton? He travelled north to Scotland. His heart was filled with expectation. A new experience. And yes, a special occasion. Hunting. Shooting on the grass moor. Drenched in mist. And a very great deal of fishing. Yes, something would happen. He'd make something happen. Chapter 2.